Welcome to the AAA NFT podcast, all about affordable NFTs, bringing you from zero to 60 in the non-fungible token world without breaking the bank. With your hosts, Andrew, aka Rantum, and George from Mostly Stable on Zed Run, who will help you navigate new projects, interview expert guests, and explore NFT trends. So whether you're on your first or 50th NFT, we're going to have something for you. And as a quick note, we are not, I repeat not, financial advisors, and nothing in this podcast should be taken as investment advice. Alrighty, disclaimer over, let's get to it. Stay. You sound good. I'm leaving that in. I know I sound good, thanks. Oh, this. this we, are we live? We're rolling in. Like, I think this is what popular podcasts do. Alright, yeah. Yeah, this yeah, week, you sneak how... It how nft buyers can detect wash trading on a given project we know it's happening but is it happening to us i'm excited to get there but first i don't know what are we seeing in the news right now andrew oh man george thank you 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 put the the news headlines together for us this week so <laughs> man so I'm trying to earn my keep here yeah this is this is big but Oh man, I, I've definitely been been keeping pace with some of these. You got a couple that I uh, didn't didn't notice earlier, but man, we'll start off with Utes. Utes have migrated to Polygon. Thirty seven million <laughs> worth. So this is we talked about this a little bit. Like, what does it take to actually migrate? And it does take active holder. You need to do something and. We've seen a, a large percentage uh, of the holders actually do that. Uh, I don't know. I'm trying to I'm trying to formulate like what this means. It seems like you should just do this out of value, of course. Is there something that we should be looking at in terms of a like, platform usage or, or network usage that you're seeing? What what's your take on this? One is that I kind of see this almost like an NBA draft or whatever NFL draft, right? Where yeah, projects yeah. actually can and are being lobbied by these L2, L1s, what have you, to to move over. And you better believe there's like somebody paying somebody for for this. But, you know, I think also this is on the second hand, a vote of confidence or lack thereof when you are moving off of your main uh, platform like Solana is oh, yeah, yeah. honestly not the home of the largest projects. And if you want to become one of the largest projects, it's there. And then the other thing I'll say is it gives me a lot of faith actually in some of those uh, Tezos bets that we made with regard to artists there. Because one mm. risk, frankly, is like I'm betting both on this artist, this piece of art, and Tezos and the future of that. Something that, look, I haven't dug into enough, but if they're using these wormhole bridges to move from one to the other, that's interesting. Yeah, it, it is interesting here, and I'm, I'm curious to see how this plays out. I, you know, as I mentioned, did not uh, put the, the news headlines together here. I did notice one project that's actually migrated from uh, ETH to Polygon and now to Arbitrum, and I'm curious to see how much of this is sort of chasing the, the, the hot uh, the hot L2, I you know I hope that it is not that, you know, I, th I think that Polygon has a lot of features that, that will sustain and I can see that there's going to be a lot of attention on, on ZK rollups on, on Arbitrum, just other L2s and, you know, in the nearby future. Yeah. Well, I wonder if also there's in the future where ordinals are like, oh no, we've Ooh, broken yeah. <laughs> and been yeah. dis <laughs> disinvited yeah. from the party at over at, uh, at Bitcoin Central. So overall, I'm bullish on these wormholes, though in the back of my mind, I do know that whenever you build a bridge, you open a hole for attack. There and we've we seen a lot of bridge-based attacks, so I'm a Absolutely. little concerned of signing any yeah. contract like that i'm, I'm not the first penguin in that pudgy water i'm skeptical and <laughs> of of the uh, security of bridges in general all right getting on to the next one this one man this one's interesting so we got Ticketmaster testing nft enabled pre-sale so this is this isn't Ticketmaster actually selling NFTs. This is a Ticketmaster allowing artists to use NFTs to grant access to 
pre-sales to early access to to tickets. There's this been, Ticketmaster has been in the headlines a lot recently with uh, some of the problems with specifically Taylor Swift's concerts and how fast they sold out. I think most of them sold out before uh, the the actual public sale. They were all sold in the public uh, in the uh, pre-sale, and there were a lot of questions about how many of the people that were deemed uh, somewhat le- longtime fans, I can't remember what the, the term was, but they used the term. There was a lot of questions about how they were determined. So I think there's, you know, Ticketmaster is the least responding here. It's definitely not a company that would be, you know, that's, that's Web3 first. And it is interesting to see that they are uh, dipping into NFT enabled sales. So this is a Avenge Sevenfold tour. I uh, was a little surprised to see that this band was touring, but then again, uh, you know, don't don't pay that much attention to it. I don't know. What's your take on this, George? What do you what do you see in here? I'm so excited by this, and it was like kind of floated yeah. under the radar a little bit. But think right? about it f- with regard to functionality for just a second. The question of why an artist actually can produce an NFT that has value is through the roof now. That one use case, the fact that, frankly, Ticketmaster is awash with freaking front-running little arbitrage monsters. And guess what? If you want to front-run my favorite band because I've been a fan for a decade and then upsell me because they charge too little at the right, wrong price and then make a VIG all the way, guess what? You have to be a holder like I was because I found my band, I bought the NFT, and I can be rewarded. Like, what a ruthlessly pragmatic use case and it's exciting i'm Great. shocked i am show shocked. that you threw that band early show it come on yeah but <laughs> then like the band can offer value directly to those those users absolutely it's, it's this is freaking great. perfect look i i don't expect this rollout to be to be perfect no. and it's going to and it's better we're moving in a good direction well this cool. no offense to avenge sevenfold but i think they're the Lower bar of maybe not Taylor Swift in terms of testing. So right, see hey, if it works. It's a great way to test. Yeah, again, no, no, no offense to the band. I don't know much about them. Um, I think it's great that they are. You know, they're definitely willing to test this out. I imagine that they had to to agree to this. I hope they did. But very cool idea, and I'm yeah, definitely keeping tabs on this one. All right, this is man. This is another one that as sparked a lot of headlines this week we've got a new real estate nft platform uh this is a home base so they sold a home this week or this past week in mcallen texas for about two hundred and forty-five thousand, two hundred and forty-seven thousand via nft so it's not the first nft it's not the first home sold via nft but this is i believe the first on solana well, first on Solana, I believe also the first that was actually the first platform that's solely dedicated to that. I could be wrong. I thought the other platforms were more dedicated to non NFT sales, and this and those were sort of uh, I don't know, like you know, side project uh, uh, sort of acquisitions. Um, but definitely interesting here. It's it's I've had a few people bring this up to me uh, in the past week. You know, you mentioned the, I mean, even the feature of being able to be uh, purchased in a, a digital currency is a big, is a big thing. What they're doing here, I believe, is actually owning the house with an LLC and then selling the NFT because we still have the problem of you know, legal ownership of a, of a home. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, that, that can't be done. You can't change that on the blockchain yet. I, I, you know, I don't th- expect that to change anytime soon. And there are still ways to sort of incorporate existing laws with, you know, again, this is with trusted intermediaries. So, you know, there are problems. It's not perfect. And it's interesting. Yeah. I mean, we see fractionalized ownership as a other possibility here when you have that NFT to be able to, to chop that up. And, you know, in the good old traditional real estate fiat world, we had, mm-hmm. you know, I think it's like what Picasso trying to do that among right. others who are like, yep. all right, you 10 people own this thing. This may be a bit different if you have like 10,000 owners. I don't know if you all get like 20 seconds of home ownership, but 
Right. <laughs> Probably works differently. Stop by. <laughs> Take a picture. Can use the bathroom. You have you have bathroom rights on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. All right. So we've got some news about Amazon's NFT plans. We discussed this recently that Amazon has NFT plans. There's been a bit more that has come out recently. Uh, there is basically a leaked email saying that there will be the potential to resell uh, to resell the tokens or these these digital assets that you have. There's not a ton of information here as it was. I mean, it, it legitimately looks like a, a leaked email here. Did you have a read of this one, George? Yeah, they're just saying like the opportunity to like resell is being like limited. Something's being locked. So there's going to be some sort of, it seems like initial drop. So maybe there's like an access token. I am completely way, way, way over reading into this. But what we are seeing is like snapshots into like Amazon Pay with transactions built into, it seems like, the interface and integration with Amazon digital uh, pieces. So, look, I am not throwing the party for mass adoption, even though this article is like really hoping for it. <laughs> Fine. Mm, yeah, I don't see that. But look, it, it's not getting stopped. It's certainly not taking the path of like Facebook's metaverse that is no longer doing metaverse, but still is meta. <laughs> right. So, one thing I know. Uh, you know, I've noticed about Amazon is if you try to get a, if you, if you had a return, you get the option to either get the refund in Amazon balance or back to your credit card. And, you know, it's equal value and they will give it to you a lot faster if it's Amazon balance. There's similar things with, if you get the delivery at a later date, you know, they'll give you a dollar credit or, or, or something, you know, digital media for credit, but they are definitely trying to do these things where you have credit within their ecosystem. I can absolutely see a play here towards making that more of a unified ecosystem where those credits can be valued across uh, multiple platforms where they are not right now. Right now, it's it's, it's a single pl- like it's a single usage that most of those incentives take. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, the last one I found. I mean, I saw it. I saw it on Twitter. It made my heart yeah. hurt. I felt so bad. But here here's why I'm pulling this out. An NFT collector accidentally destroyed a hundred and twenty nine thousand dollar CryptoPunk. Oh and yeah. And this is particularly sad because frankly this is like being run on like cnbc.com and so right now like this is the kind of thing that brings nft into the mainstream like the 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 articles we're talking about are like coming out of like coindesk or out of you know like uh you know decrypt in our ecosystem cnbc not our ecosystem this is what the public's view of nfts really is it is a hot mess where even people that know their stuff lose their stuff so this is just the sort of like cold water on frankly anybody who thinks like hey the user experience is fine the way it is like it's just not it's not the one it yeah that's a good point <laughs> womp, womp. i just don't even know what to say there's so much to be done for user experience in web three it's oh man it's it's frustrating um there's a lot of potential i guess i should look at it that way right yeah a lot of upside and you know what frankly if you are you know a holder of crypto punks you just got that much more rare like at this point how many get accidentally burned you know if you're moving yeah. stuff well, I look, mean, with if you're moving stuff test something with a different wallet a different like i mean i don't play at that level but i mean i have a couple of nfts that i would be I've wrapped and I had a punk. I wrapped a punk. It's scared. I mean, it scares me thinking about that. And I also don't quite understand how you. Uh, you don't understand how you burn feel, it to a wrong the, address. It's, but. it's it's really too bad. I, I you know he you know mistakes happen. That sucks. <laughs> yeah, there it is. Right, like, and at a certain point, like, you're like, oh, it's on you. You made a mistake. It's on you. Like, how many times are you going to say that? You're like, no, it's really on the UX. It's it's just not where it needs to be for people to be moving around this level of asset. Um, so heart goes out to you, fella. Yeah. Start with, look, if you're listening to us and considering purchasing your first NFT, that is a punk, 
<laughs> I'm going to say, reach out to us. We'll help you. Don't do that. We'll buy something else. I'll sell you something for a lot, a lot less. Okay. Hit me up. Buy a moon cat. How about that? Discord. And wrap Hit the moon cat. Go wrap that moon cat. I got a deal for you. <laughs> <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> This is not financial advice brought to you by, we don't have an affordable project this week where uh, they're all affordable. There are actually some oh, I'm, I'm, oh, I'm looking at that I recent art blocks thing. I think there's like some shopping to be done coming up. I think. Oh man, this is actually one other piece of news. Art blocks coming out with their own marketplace. This mm. is, this is big, I think for the, the generative art marketplace. So we've seen all the problems with not even problems. We've seen the, uh, I should, shouldn't say it doesn't have problems. So we've seen the wars with royalties, with, with platform fees. Artblock is coming out their own their own platform for secondary sales. I think this is going to take a good percentage of the uh, Artblock sales. We'll see what happens. Archipelago was another attempt at being a marketplace for uh, generative art sales. Never fully caught on. I think this has more potential because it is from our plugs and there's a really dedicated community there. That's sort of where I was able to get a lot of traction with my dashboards early on. And I know how feverish that community can be. So I am, I'm, man, I'm definitely watching this one and, and curious to see how this goes to see what, uh, what sort of fees develop there. OpenSea is not focusing on those fees right now. I mean, even talking with people there they are focusing on minting fees so you know there's a platform that's trying to 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 do something a little bit different i, I i'm i'm curious where these platform wars and i think we're far from from settled i'm still skeptical of blur being the, the the king as everybody seems to be to to be crowning it right now and man this is uh, I think it'll be more uh, more of a shakeup than than maybe people are letting or, or people are uh, predicting right now. Yeah, I I think you have a much better pulse on the art blocks marketplace opportunity. Uh, I just I just don't know how you compete with zero fees, but maybe there's some additional experience elements. Maybe there's like a custodial holding where you protect somebody's assets. I, I you know I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't look. I don't know entirely how it's going to go, but I think there will be incentives. And look, a lot of people do things with the, the promise of maybe something happening in the future. All right. Well, <laughs> yeah. The theme. Well, oh, that in mind, there was a rumor of a mask token going around this week. A a meta mask token that has been dispelled, unfortunately. Did see a few dashboards pop up. I don't know if, if anybody's still hoping. It seems like those have been dispelled. So I think we can move on now to our to our project. What do you have for us this week, George? The pro I mean, I don't have any project. Here's what I was gonna say. I am <laughs> watching these recent uh I'll say like one ETH projects that Kevin Rose was highlighting on his podcast. Mm -hmm. And he was like, his affordable is one ETH, mine is like mm, point two. Point <laughs> one. But yeah. I'm curious, anything that he sees sort of value in at this point, and then sort of watching the the normal hype cycle go up and come back down. So far, every time we have talked about this, like, wait, watch, and see it drop, like, it it happens. So, oh, huh, we haven't been wrong. No, we haven't been we haven't been wrong in our estimates that you should wait and watch the number number go down and then go shopping. So uh, I'm kind of like waiting on a couple of those. So I'm like doing this sort of like picking up the trash of like two weeks later off of Kevin Rose recommendations to see like price and I'm like, all right, because there's quality somewhere in there, certainly with artists. And if he's hyping that artist once, they may happen again. But uh, yeah, that that's like my my current thought anyway. We are talking about wash trading, how to identify it, and just to be clear, yeah, we talked uh, wash about trading. Recently, right? It's we, what? We, we discussed this recently, like what is actual wash trading? I think it's, man, this is good, good topic here because it has come up in recent episodes and it's hard to define. Yeah, well, you know, it depends on who you talk to because I don't even know, like, 
technically they say like you know in february we had that huge bump and it was up 126 percent versus the previous in terms of activity happening on x2 why do blur looks rare mm -hmm. and we we saw and have speculated that potentially you know according to certain researchers like what one in five transactions i've seen anywhere from 20 to 40 percent quoted as being wash traded i think it can be difficult technically what we're talking about it's market manipulation and it's when uh you know someone basically trades with themselves to like one wallet to another to artificially inflate the price give this illusion of liquidity of a little bit of that fomo drive up and then once at a certain point everyone you know gets the signal then they begin to to dump on the public once they think it is a, a project on the run and it's it seems very hard to stop and we see a lot more of it so here's the question yeah. Like, yeah yeah i'm looking at a project someone listening is looking at a project mm -hmm. what are some of the elements that we're looking for to identify wash trading to set off a little pattern recognition for us you mentioned earlier volatility volatility in general spikes in activity are a pretty good uh, indicator if you see something that shoots up abnormally from where it was that's a pretty good indicator that there's something in <laughs> abnormal going on now can't say that that's you know 100 percent true if there is something you know if something shoots up you know we also know that there's a lot of cases in nfts where there's a news of if you own this you'll get x airdrop whatever you know some, something of that sort so there are cases where this happens you know but definitely it's worth looking at when there's volume spikes there's a one of the issues that i see is that the reliance on volume as a metric of of of, of leaders of dashboards uh it's very easy to, to game, especially when you have, when you can do these wash trades that really don't cost much, especially if you put, the, when we've got 0% uh, platform fees, and if you can put in 0% royalties, <clears throat> uh, you know, you're not really, you don't really, it doesn't really cost anything to do this wash trading. And it can get you to the top of many different leaderboards across different, different platforms. CryptoSlam recently did a uh, did an analysis of the wash trading that is happening on Blur and found found much more than what was being attributed to wash trading than some of the other some of the other researchers out there. And it's not saying those researchers are wrong. I think it's just that their methodology was maybe outdated compared to what was being done on Blur. There's Things change over time, and the incentives definitely drive uh, behavior. And I think that we have to keep that in mind as you know, as these incentives are put out there, the behavior will change and adapt to to maximize the, those rewards. Yeah. So you're mentioning here, like what what we can do here is like check the trading volume, and so here are the triggers. You have high yeah. trading volume, fine. However, if you see yeah. a lot of volume that doesn't match with the number of active traders, that's a flag. So you're looking yeah. for not yeah. just high volume, but high volume of unique wallets as far as you can tell. And you're absolutely right. This is on the rise too right now because, frankly, back when we started this podcast a couple of years back, you know, the gas fees would chew you up. And so right. if you're out there thinking you're, right. oh, I'm totally See, scamming these guys, you're paying a hundo per $100. Triple digits all the time. That was what the norm was, right? And now we're seeing- Oh, I got excited when I saw something under like, oh, $90. I'm pulling the trigger. 20 right now. Like when I see 80, I'm like, man, there's something crazy going on. That, oh. My my gas fees used to be man. our current affordable Remember projects. You see crashed regularly. <laughs> that anyway. was- <laughs> Look, so there nice. you go. Here's your trading volume. So it's volume versus unique traders. Here's another one. You can analyze the transactions a bit and just like look at the activity of the project and you're looking for those large number of transactions between the same accounts. And you can kind of eyeball this almost, right? Like, is there a clever way to do this, Andrew? 
I mean, I know you've created Dune dashboards, right? Where you could put in a project and you can kind of look at the the top traders. Is there a way to see like, oh, it's between these you know, two honestly, or, or folks more clever? Great. OpenSea has really good uh, mm -hmm. charts on this at this point. OpenSea has incorporated great charts right in there. Gem has some different ones. And, you know, Gem being owned by OpenSea, it's actually different. But I found that those are so much more uh, accessible and useful. They're so much more accessible than, than many other platforms. Now, I don't go to a lot of the dashboards that even I set up and, and created uh, because most of the information I, I need is right there at this point and that's i mean it's it's great you can look at things like so when we're looking at those when i look at those i'm looking at things like how many you know at the, at the top holders at the uh how many are owned by the top holders what those like who are those top holders looking at the recent activity there's yeah if you haven't played around with that 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 uh tab definitely check into that one a bit more it gives a pretty good overview of, of the uh, collection at this point. Yeah. And another one here is look for, and we talk about this, the, the weighted distribution of ownership. So mm -hmm. if one mm -hmm. wallet owns more than like a number of percent, like as soon as you start talking about owning like 5% or more of a project, like massive alarm bells should be going off especially because that thing. person can move well, that market thing, very quickly team being paid i think that's again they're holding but like, like that's lock up like you know i think there's a different thing there that can actually be good i'd say if they aren't selling but the second they start selling that's that's a bad sign right <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's a very bad sign uh all righty uh you can research the team. You mentioned the team. You want to understand who they are, their track record. We have talked about this ad nauseum when you're analyzing a project. But again, if they are that anonymous team, which we do not love, and you can't tell whose wallet is who's in there, uh, they probably have a, his, you know, a history of creating these projects, have a strategy behind wash trading that hypes and then drops on the public market, right? Because their job is to design something that looks good off the bat, has confidence, but is anonymous, and they have enough wallets to move things around. And, you know, it's a, I, I think it's a rinse and repeat. I think there are digital teams running this play again and again and again right now. I think there are, and I think there are plenty of named agencies, teams, backers doing this as well. I've, I'm less, I'm less against the, the Anon teams, if they have a track record, if you can prove that you've done something. I've seen plenty of cases of, of non-Anon teams being... Yeah, like, here's blessed. my reputation in a, an adjacent area, like trash removal, and now I can do crypto, NFTs. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I want to see a track record in crypto. I mean, I think there's a lot of ways. I know there are a lot of ways to prove yourself without actually, you know, operating you know, operating a contract that has, you know, millions of funds or even hundreds of thousands, there are ways to prove without doing that as the first step. All right. A final one here. I don't know if you have others beyond it, but I really like this one because it is the anti-signal. Basically, check social media for the project. Uh, and if you see it pumping on like Twitter, not even pumping, but just a lot of chatter on Twitter about the project that's like just excessive or spammy and like you can tell now which sort of like profiles are are junk like if you see that type of hype on social like the search i'd say run don't follow. walk see people you follow keep that that filter in mind when mm. you do these searches and see if it's actually people that you're that you're confident in and if they're talking about it you know maybe that's a different story but see what they're saying I have definitely found that uh, I found that I get a lot more DMS from people pumping things and then look at like who they're, you know, almost they're not followed by anybody that I know. Like that's a pretty good rule, even though if they have a good following, but it's, oh man, there's always new scams out there, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, it depends on the day, but I think that's a, I think that's a good way to look at it with those different options. 
you know, as we uh, get to the end here, I don't think we're going to have time for Vitalik again this week. I know. I know. He's been waiting. He's in the waiting. waiting. Right He's like on the line right now. I just, you know, uh, so maybe I'll send him a moon cat. M&Ms only. And I just don't know if we can do that. No, I can't. I don't have the technology for that. <laughs> All right. Well, I will see you out there and leave a, leave a rating, leave a review. We love those things. Later. Later. This has been an episode of the Triple A NFT podcast, all about affordable NFTs. The episode notes and resources may be found at 3ANFT.com in our show notes. Again, 3ANFT.com. And that reminder don't bet what you can't afford to lose. Remember, we are not financial advisors and nothing in this podcast should be taken as investment advice. Thanks for joining us. Hope you learned something.